Joining us is uh, Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. He's joining us now from the Conservative Political Action Conference here in Washington. Uh, uh, Congressman Paul, thanks very much for joining us. Let's talk about Egypt, a subject you know quite a bit about. You've said uh, controversial remarks. Uh, he said the United States is, Egypt is the United States' 30-year mistake. Uh, what were you referring to? Well, we've invested a lot of money in the Mubarak, and uh, I don't think it was a good investment. That it was stable for a while, but it was building the resentment and the instability that finally burst out. So I would say the thirty, the seventy billion dollars was not worth it, and that unfortunately many of those dollars ended up in Swiss bank accounts for his family. So I don't. I think it was a big mistake. And uh, we really don't have the money to spare, and uh, I don't think it does anything for our national security. So if you had your way, the billion and a half dollars a year that the U.S. provides Egypt in military, mostly military, about $1.3 billion, about another $200 million in economic assistance, if you had your way, all of that would be gone immediately? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm not a believer in foreign aid. And, you know, I sort of liked what Eisenhower did in 1956. I was a college student then, had remembered the Korean War, and when uh, the British and the French were uh, attacked by the Egyptians to take the canal, and they went to Eisenhower, and Eisenhower said, I don't want to have anything to do with it. So I think that was good advice, and that's probably the way we should have stayed that way. And uh, we should do a lot less a lot sooner and not waste all this money uh, because it tends to come back to haunt us. It reminds me a little bit about propping up the Shah of Iran. Just look at that problem. And then we ended up with the Ayatollah. So they're not good investments. I, I, like, the, I like the founder's advice. You, you know, be friends with people and trade with people and negotiate and get along with them. And, uh, and, but not to get involved in internal affairs and all these treaties and border squabbles. Uh, it's not in our, our best interest, but it will come to an end, uh, mainly for economic reasons, and that's what happened to the Soviet system. They didn't end because they all of a sudden got wisdom. They ended because, uh, you know, they got bogged down in Afghanistan, and they went bankrupt, and the whole system fell apart. And we could face a crisis just like that, and we will have to pull back. So what I hear you saying is the United States should simply walk away from Egypt right now and let the Egyptians do what they want. But in terms of uh, maintaining this very tight military-to-military -military connection, uh, the U.S. should simply leave the Egyptians to the Egyptians. Is that your attitude? Sure. I think so. I mean, if we'd have a problem like that, we wouldn't want foreigners in here to sort things out. We would say it's our responsibility. So uh, I think that's the problem that we've been too much involved. So the sooner we get out of it, the better. We shouldn't. I mean, right now, uh, I'm sure our State Department, our CIA is looking around for our next guy that we can support because most of them now have expressed, well, we can't really give them uh, democracy. They might elect the wrong person. See, we're all for democracy as long as they pick the right person and we just as soon prefer a dictator that will do our bidding and then we give them a lot of money I'd like another option rather than either just bombing people or giving them money I would say friendship and and diplomacy is a much better way to go I mean this army was built by us and the military industrial complex loved it they made a lot of money off that but the army was there to for all those 30 years was to protect Mubarak it wasn't for national defense purposes so that's our army 450,000 well, troops that we were more I was just going to say, administration officials going back to Republican administrations, whether Bush or Reagan or Democratic administrations, the current one, or, or, or Bill Clinton's administration, they'll argue this military assistance to Egypt is a good investment in the United States because Egypt was an ally, a strategic partner, uh, and, a, and, a, and cooperated with the U.S. in the war on terror, for example. So this was money well spent. That's the argument we've hear, heard now for 30 years. Well, yeah. But but I think our current events proved my point. It wasn't well spent because it ended up in chaos and we don't know who the next dictator is going to be and it helped contribute to our bankruptcy. So well, I would maybe say the it's, next, it's not uh, Maybe well the next leader of Egypt to, will, but, it, but if the next leader of Egypt, Congressman, is a democratically elected leader, popular, uh, and doing all the right things, it wouldn't necessarily be a dictator. Why do we have to well, assume the next leader of Egypt is going to be a dictator? Yeah. 
that would be great. But I, I, I personally believe that the odds of that happening are much better if we're not there picking up and picking and, uh, the individuals to spend our money on it. So I'm for that. I just don't believe that the best way to do is get in there and finance the military. The military right now, of course, is dependent on us, and the military is in charge, so we really own the country right now through the military. And the people will not put up with this. Temporarily, maybe, but ultimately, the people will reject it. We need to think about these problems in terms of what if another country did that to us? The Democrats and Republicans and Independents would all rebel against that. And that is what the American people don't quite understand. Well, on that point, I think you got a good point that uh, the Egyptians don't want any outside interference in their domestic affairs. They want to do what they, what they need to do. And th at least today, they seem to be on that path. But it's going to be a very, very difficult path. Uh, uh, Congressman, you're at that CPAC, that Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington. One quick political question before I let you go. Are you going to seek the Republican presidential nomination uh, this year? I haven't made up my mind, and that's a truthful answer. And uh, I'm sort of glad nobody else has made up their mind either. So I feel like I have a couple more months to sort it all out. You'll make up your mind up in the next. The, you'll make your mind up in the next two months. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. It would be necessary in the next several months of some sort. I don't have a timetable. And do you want to want to respond to, uh, to Donald Trump, who told that CPAC conference last night? They told your supporters there that y you don't have a chance of getting elected. That, I think I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he was he was brutally blunt in, in a Donald Trump kind of way. Yeah, you know, uh, some people pointed out that a lot of people said that about my views when I ran for Congress and I was elected to Congress 11 times and I had the same views and some of my views are very libertarian challenged the status quo Republican I had a very conservative Bible Belt Republican district and they said there's no way you can win these war uh, win these uh, win an election uh, by basing everything on the Constitution people aren't interested in that anymore but uh, so uh, winning 11 elections would sort of raise a question on whether or not that was an accurate statement You've been pretty impressive over the years, uh, and, and you were pretty impressive, I must say, uh, in the uh, in the run for the Republican nomination last time around. Your 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 supporters were probably among the most enthusiastic out there, as I could personally testify. Hey, Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.